electron <coughs> magnetic dipole moment of a revolving electron
into 10 is from minus 24 ampere meter square. This is one magneton. Okay, there is a minimum dipole moment. It's called Bohr magneton. Come full name. Bohr's magneton. Fine. So all the dipole moments are integral multiple of this because less than that is not possible. Understood? So whatever magnetic dipole moment you find must be an integral multiple of this. Does not matter how it is cost. Understood? Any doubts? No, I want to correct myself here. It need not be an integral multiple because magnetic dipole moment is a vector, it will add like vectors. Okay. If they are aligned, then only they will add up like numbers. If they have they are made, making some angle, then uh, they will not add up like charges. Okay. So in charges, well, if you find the smallest possible unit, it makes sense to say that all the charges magnitude will be integral multiple of the smallest possible, but not in the magnetic level. All right. So this completes the. Uh, let us say one full section of this chapter which deals with calculating magnetic field itself. Okay, we have calculated magnetic field using Bio's law, using Ampere's law, and then we delve into uh, the basic cause of magnetism, find out the magnetic field because of that, and then since it is a basic cause, we try to find out the what is the naturally existing the basic magnetic dipole moment, which is. Magneton. Okay, now we are getting into second part of the chapter which is the effect of the magnetic field. Alright, till now we have calculated the magnetic field. Now we are trying to find out what is the effect because of the magnetic field. Alright, what, what do you think could be the effect due to the magnetic field? Magnetic field can create force just like electric field. Okay, magnetic field can create torque just like electric field. Okay, but magnetic field will never do work. That is something unique about magnetic field that we'll discuss later, later on. And since it doesn't do any work, there is no point defining its potential energy because potential energy is equal to negative of the work done by the field. Right? So there, there will not be something like you know magnetic potential or things like that. Because you cannot define magnetic potential energy. The work done is zero, always. Alright? So that, that is one thing which is not there in magnetism chapter, which was there in electrostatic. Because in electrostatic electric field can do the work. So that is where we have defined the electrostatic potential, electrostatic potential energy. But here we are not doing it because it doesn't do any. Work. But that doesn't mean that it cannot apply force. Magnetic field still applies force, it still applies a torque. Okay? So that is what we are trying to see. Right down, the chapter I mean moving charges. As in we have as we have discussed already that we are dividing this chapter into two parts: magnetism and then moving charges. So most of these stuff, as in the formula for the force and uh, the magnitude, or whatever we are going to discuss, or whatever we are introducing right now, is an experimental finding. Okay. For example, if I tell you that velocity is in this direction, magnetic field in that direction, then the direction of force is this. Suppose I tell you that. Okay. If you ask me why. I don't have an answer to that. It is an experimental finding. Okay? So, what was found out that if there is a charge Q that moves in a particular direction with a velocity V, okay, and it is moving in a magnetic field, then the force because of magnetic field on that moving charge is this. Write down. Magnetic force is Q V cross V. Understood? This is from where the story starts. So we will not get into why this. 
Okay, because you have not asked why force is equal to charge into electric field. You did not ask that point in time. So now also please don't ask. Okay, because that is what? Uh, how can uh, something uh, apply a force or uh, apply torque and not be able to do that? Yeah, it happens, no? Like you had this uh, example in your textbook where a pulley was traveling with a luggage on his head and when when he has already traveled and put your luggage down, you told him that you have done zero work. You had this example or not? If you were if you were an accident, you did not Suppose I push this ball, the ball doesn't move. The work done by you is work done by me or you is zero if something doesn't move. But the force is there. When the cylinder is rolling in an inclined plane, there is a force, there is a torque. Because it is a pure rolling friction, doesn't do any work. So it moves perpendicular to the direction. Yeah, it, there are several examples where force is there, but work done is not there. That's what I'm saying. Okay. For example, if I apply force on this table, okay, friction force is applied on it. Even I'm applying force, but network that is zero. It is not slight. Okay. At times, uh, you know, in our head, you know, consciously or uh, you know, the consciously or subconsciously, we are creating this uh, notion in our head that if there is a work, there has to be force, and if there is a force, there is a work. Okay, that kind of it is natural to come. Uh, I mean, natural to ask that because we tend to mix things which we have learned with what we are assuming. Okay, those students who do not assume things, they keep their mind clean. It, it is not about how much you know. It is about how less you know and how clearly you know. That, that what matters at the end. Okay, so it is natural that that kind of doubt, even I used to have a lot of such doubt. Okay, I, I was not one of the brilliant one in the class. There was much better one than me in the class. He was doing excellently well. So we scored similar times though. But he was doing better throughout. Okay. Anyways, so coming back to the thing, huh? So, magnetic force is Q V cross B. This is from where the story starts. Okay? And we know that electric force is Q times C. Alright? So, if, if let us say, if let us say, both electric magnetic field are there, then the total force will be Q times E plus Q V cross B. Okay? So what if you also adopt the direction? He can. It's a cap lagao hai. What is this? No, no, I don't know. I don't know. This total force is called Lorentz force. This is called Lorentz force because Lorentz might have done a lot of experiments to arrive at you know, this kind of relation. Okay, so there are hell lot of numericals on just based on this, nothing else. That's it. Many many numericals. You can't even imagine the kind of numericals. In fact, if you if you have ever to just open up a uh, chapter where uh, they talk about moving charge and magnetism. There are a lot of very very interesting questions. So you apply this formula, and then they, you know, sometimes electron will move in a spiral, and the spiral opens up more and more. The radius increases and opens up. Sometimes it moves in a helical path. So you can make all sorts of numerical while moving in a helical path. How much time will it take for it to go up a distance of certain distance and while moving it hits something? So, what direction it should start moving with what velocity or what is the magnitude so that it is able 
able to hit a target. So there's so many, so many things that can be made. And suppose, you know, for some re region there is an electric field or magnetic field, electron or proton is thrown in that region with certain velocity and direction. You may be asked to find the deviation it has, it has when it comes out of that zone. Okay? So this particular section, only this much, is as big as finding the magnetic field, whatever we discussed till now. But the theory is just this much. Why it is as big? Because now magnetism is just 2%. 98% is mechanics and differential equation. Fine? So if I just tell you that you know electric field is certain direction, magnetic field is certain direction, and this is the velocity. And if you apply this formula, after that, magnetism took, they will take a back seat and it will become a kinematic question there. Alright? So let's try to analyze this force a little bit and then we will see few new methods. Okay, so this is a magnetic force. Okay? We are now trying to find out the nature of the magnetic force. So, uh, can you tell one by one few observation based on this expression? You, if you look at this expression, what are the kind of observation you can make on? Force is perpendicular to magnetic. Think about it and then speak. Ah, tell me, anyone? Uh, work done by like, uh, no, not that. We are not getting to work done right now. Look at the experiment. What, what is the first thing that comes in your mind? Okay. So write down. If if velocity is this velocity. If angle between velocity and magnetic field is 0 or 180 degree, the force will be 0. It will be as good as that, you know, as if magnetic field is not there. It doesn't matter. It will not experience any force. Understood? Then force is maximized here when the angle is present. Ah, coming with So, if it is zero, magnetic force will be zero. So, if suppose electron is going like this and magnetic field is also like that, it will keep on going straight line as if nothing is there. Understood? Okay. The second observation as Mr. Bharat has pointed out is Force is created only due to the perpendicular. I mean, these things are very obvious, okay? But then you need to register in your brain. Otherwise, you will not be able to use it in numericals. Force is created, even force equal to mass initialization was very obvious, okay? But we still struggle to apply it. Force is created only due to the perpendicular component of velocity to be magnetic. So basically perpendicular to magnetic field, whatever is the velocity, the force is because of that. Understood? So the velocity could be making certain angle with the magnetic field. Are you getting it? Velocity could be making certain angle with the magnetic field. So you can split the velocity into two parts. Parallel to magnetic field, perpendicular to magnetic field. Right? So parallel to magnetic field, it will continue to move with the parallel component of the velocity. Understood? Now, 
Next, what would be the next observation? Ah. Force is perpendicular to both V and B. Velocity and magnetic field. Force. Okay. Can you tell me examples when this happens? Where? Give me an example where force is perpendicular to velocity. So, the projectile at the height of its trajectory and the highest point of its trajectory. So, 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 out of the velocity. Whatever is the velocity, magnetic field will try to create a circle out of it. If it applies force, it will try to create a circle. Understood? Any doubt? No. Okay. There is one more understanding about this expression. Huh? Can the magnetic field not change the net velocity of the... Come into that, come into that. I am talking about this particular expression only, this one. Okay? Now, can you find out the work done by magnetic force if you are moving by, a dis by your displacement is dr. Can you find out what is fb dot dr? This is the work done. Right? How much is that? How it is zero? Zero profit. Don't don't talk in qualitative manner. Expression is in front of you. Can you derive it to be zero? Don't don't just sit like this and oh it is zero because of this and that. Because you have slight idea, somebody told you already that it is zero. You are going. Prove it. It's a box product. Dot in the cross the box. See, velocity is dr by dt. So the force which you write is q into dr by dt cross b that dot product with dr. dr cross b will be perpendicular to dr or not? That you are taking dot product. This is zero. This is not that. This is work done by the magnetic field. This is zero. Okay. So we have found out the work done by magnetic field is zero if there is a movement of dr. Understood? What does it mean? That the change in standing energy should be. If dW is 0, it implies that change in kinetic energy should be 0. And if mass is constant, magnitude of velocity initially should be equal to magnitude of velocity finally. Kinetic energy can't change. So magnetic field, right now magnetic field, magnetic field doesn't do any work. Magnetic field never does work. Hence, it can't change the kinetic energy. It can never change the kinetic energy. But what it can do with the velocity? Can it change the direction? It can change the direction. Write down in brackets. So it cannot change the magnitude of the velocity, but it changes the direction of the velocity. Fine. Okay. So 
there are many observations. So, read this again, one by one. So, so the force of magnetic field acts until it becomes parallel to the direction. It will never become parallel. If it is becoming parallel, then magnetic field will do some work. Keep on moving in a circle. First read this, then we we'll go further. And so what if electric field is also applied? Then what will happen? Can electric field do the work? Yes, it can do the work. So electric field can change the kinetic energy. So there can be a mix of electric and magnetic field. Magnetic velocity is decreasing and then and the magnetic field is also there. Okay? So a lot of tricky questions can be made out of it. Any doubts? Have you read it? Right?